Today, Osmo action, first look and unboxing, coming right up. If we are just meeting for the first time, I'm Felix with Quadcopter Guide, and on this channel, I help you get the most out of your drones and other filmmaking gear, like your Osmo Action, for example. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We're gonna take a quick look at what's inside the packaging, run through how to activate the Osmo Action, as well as do the first firmware update, and so you guys get to see what that's like, and then just do a super quick run through the menus so you can see what's available. And again, I'm gonna do a lot of in-depth videos on this, camera. All right, let's jump into it. Let's head inside. And here it is, the Osmo Action, featuring a 1 over 2.3 inch CMOS sensor and a lens which has a field of view of 145 degrees at aperture f2.8. Immediately you can see that new front screen which is 1.4 inches diagonally and features a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. The rear screen by the way is 2.25 inches and offers a resolution of 325 pixels per inch. In the simple yet highly recyclable packaging, we are presented with, of course, the camera, some safety guidelines, the locking screw, as well as a USB-C cable, the curved adhesive mount with the quick release base, which I find very effective. You just push the little lock mechanism and then twist to remove. To install, push back and twist until you hear that click. You also get a flat adhesive mount. And this here is the battery case, which of course stores the battery. And there's also a place for a micro SD card in case you wanna keep a spare with you when you're out and about. The battery is kind of a different design than the ones we're used to on the GoPros. The seal to keep it waterproof to 11 meters without an additional case is just right at the base of the battery now. Oh yeah, the camera frame pops off real easily. At the bottom we can see the battery slot. Now what's interesting about the battery is you have to push it on both sides to have it click in because there's actually two battery release levers. And of course to release the battery you just move both buttons or levers at the same time. If the battery is not perfectly seated, you will see that on one of the two buttons with a orange highlight. So just make sure every time you put the battery in, you don't see those. On the right side of the Osmo Action, you see the speaker, an air pressure balance hole, and also the second microphone. On the top, we've got the shutter or record button, the first status LED, as well as the power button, and also the first microphone. On the left side of the device, you've got the quick switch button, as well as the cover for the USB-C port and also the micro SD card slot. For the best micro SD cards for your Osmo Action, be sure to check the link in the description below. After fully charging the Osmo Action and powering it on, you are greeted with this screen. Tap your language to confirm your selection and then activate the Osmo Action with the Nemo app. In the app, hit connect on the device connection screen and verify the code shown. Accept the lengthy terms of use and then enable the slider to be able to activate the device. After hitting next, the Osmo action gets activated. After you go through the quick tutorial and hit done, the firmware update automatically starts. All you have to do is tap download to download the files. For some reason, after you download the files, you have to reconnect the Osmo action and then hit install to install the firmware. Connect the Osmo Action one last time and you are ready to go. The Mimo app feels of course very similar to the app for the Osmo Pocket because it's the same app. Um, there's a couple different settings that are new. We'll talk about those in detail in future videos. For example, this de-warp setting right here. Of course, you can control the recording mode on the app itself. You get HDR video, which is new, as well as the usual suspects of video, photo, and time-lapse, of course. Having access to the app is great, but of course, let's take a look at what you can do with just the camera. By swiping down, you get access to these settings. The left one allows you to create and save custom modes. Up to five can be saved here. Next, you can adjust the brightness of the display. And to the right of that, you can lock the screen. Unlock by swiping up. On the top right, there's an additional menu for other settings. 
Bottom left, we have screen flip, which allows us to orient the screen in case the camera is mounted upside down, for example. To the right of that is spot metering, on or off, as well as turning voice control on and off. On the right are the front screen settings. We can choose between filling the screen and cropping in a little bit, or showing a letterbox and showing the full field of view. Out of the box, the quick switch button lets us cycle through four pre-selected modes. Holding down the quick switch button just a little bit longer switches between the screens, so from front to back or back to front. If we swipe left on the back screen, we have access to some more advanced settings for manual exposure, for example, or custom white balance, color, and de-warp on or off. De-warp is great, it removes that super fisheye look. Swiping up from the bottom allows us to change the resolution and frames per second, as well as Rocksteady on or off. Blue means Rocksteady is enabled, white Rocksteady means it's disabled. Here's just a super quick test with Rocksteady off. And here with Rocksteady on. Of course, in future videos, I will do an in-depth analysis of this, so be sure to subscribe for that. Swiping from the left allows you to look at previously recorded files. Hey, if you enjoyed that first look and unboxing of the Osmo Action, give that video a like. And let me know in the comments below if you're thinking about picking up one of these, and also what future videos you'd like to see of me comparing this thing. I've got a Hero 7 Black I borrowed from my buddy, Mr. Yan Hai, thank you for that. So I'll be doing a comparison against the Hero 7 Black, as well as the Osmo Pocket. Other cameras I could compare it to is the Hero 6 Black, the Hero 3, and the OG, the GoPro 1. But I don't think anybody wants to see that, <laughs> so we'll just stick to the Hero 7 Black. Be sure to check out some of the other content on this channel. You can do that by clicking on one of these playlists or videos right here. And as always, have a good day. We'll see you in the next one.